Why do you think that the work of Philippe Gentil has been described as influential to contemporary poetry? Uh, well, Gentil, among others, is one artist who started to experiment with the form of poetry and look towards cross-disciplinary approaches. I think his work is interesting because it doesn't impose definitions of what a puppet is. There's no real attempt at any idea of purity in relation to the form. As such, it allowed a space to question what puppetry might be and offer up approaches based in puppetry practice which can be applied to other disciplines. From your experience with the company and first-hand knowledge of their process, what is it that influences their performative work? Well, I think the unconscious mind is fairly crucial. His work tries to explore aspects of the surreal, where associations are made in dreams, but an explanation is not important. In relation to this, ideas of transformation occur regularly, as do blurring of boundaries, uh, the distinction between puppet and puppeteer being one. Do you think that there is deliberate social, historical or cultural reference in the work that you've encountered? Hmm. That's an interesting question. No, I don't think there is. They aim to work in a way that is culturally non-specific. They stress the importance of metaphor or symbolism as a way to broach cultural differences. As such, they try to avoid direct reference to social, historical, cultural content. <coughs> Having said that, I think there are still these references in their work, perhaps unavoidable, as the work is always a result of people creating it, and this influence will seep in. Would you describe the company as favouring object animation as a tendency rather than puppetry? No, not really. Interestingly, I don't think they make any distinction between the two. You might always, or you might also add animating materials as another approach. And all three are equally valid and equally important for their work. But also they don't really favour any of these over movement or dance either. When they work on a piece, the particular perfor performative approach, be it dance, puppetry, object, etc., is as important as what the work might be trying to explore. So any of these might be used depending on the need of the work. The balance then spread across several performance disciplines, as well as among several approaches to an animation. As such, those looking for a largely puppet-based production probably won't find that much of it. How would you describe the role of the performer in relation to the objects or puppets? The relationship between the live performer and the animated is one of interest for them. Again, it comes back to the idea of blurring of boundaries, I think. The final reading we might get as an audience member is as much about the relationship between these two as it is about what they are as individuals. We know one is alive and the other we know is not, and yet we will believe in the life of both of them for a brief moment on stage by placing them next to each other, the differences between the two are complicated, and we possibly enter into a state where the impossible, uh, living puppets that is, inhabit the same world as the everyday.